Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I actually made it here by six o'clock, which is amazing because I keep I keep messing up. I keep either ignoring my alarm or something happens. So this morning, though, I am awake and got my coffee ready. The coffee pot didn't mess up. It's it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. So, um, um, today's topic is mine, 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 and what, I mean, that may not be exactly what you think it's going to be as far as this topic goes, but over the course of the last couple weeks, especially, and even probably the last couple months, I've noticed a, a certain theme and it's, I think we deal with this in different times of our life. I know that I sure the heck have in the past and it is, is a really, it's a tough, it's a tough lesson because it comes down to the lesson of, of letting go and to to truly let go, we have to realize that we can't try to hold or contain something consistently or even at all. It's more about we set the intent, we, we you know, allow it to come in and then it just is. And we stay in that allowance of it being with us instead of trying to grab a hold and go, oh, mine. This is mine, this is mine, this is mine. Because when we go like this, when we go, this is mine, this is mine, it's coming from a place of fear, not from a place of, of love and fullness of, of abundance. So we actually are speaking out to the world that we don't have or that we don't deserve, that we're going to lose by doing this. And this right here, this grabbing and this holding that we do of the mind world, it can go into so many different parts. And, and I'm going to just kind of hit on different topics because I've had this come up in, in different coaching appointments. I've had it come up in my private life. My, I deal with it with my kids all the time. That's for sure. I mean, it's a very popular, um, kind of more childish mentality. But at the same time, as adults deal with, we do this so many different places, so many different places. Big places though, is that um, we do it around our relationships a lot. So this is like where jealousy tends to, it happens to pop in and, and you know, it, it'll creep in there and it, it, we go, you're mine and I'm yours and nobody else can touch, you know, like no, no touching, no this, no that. It's that mentality. So I'm not saying that relationships should be any which way to each their own. Um, it doesn't much matter, but as long as, as long as the couple's happy, but if we carry this energy of mine in anything, whether it is relationship with money, we do this. Oh, this is, this is where I used to have a humongous issue. And I still kind of teeter around this every now and then and it pops up for me in the strangest of places, like when I'm really, really doing great, sometimes I'll all of a sudden, um, have, have this like scarcity thought go through me of, oh, I need to really conserve now because I don't know if it's going to go away. This is, this, you know, like this hold back, which is kind of like, this is mine. You know, this is mine. I don't, I don't want to share it. I don't want to let it flow through me. I don't want to, allow the abundance flow through me because I'm scared I'm not going to ever be able to have it again at like this or like that. So it's still that same holding concept that we do in kind of relationships. Like I see my, my 15 year old daughter, she has her first, well, she's had boyfriends, but this is her first like real boyfriend, what mom would classify as a boyfriend. And they're now officially dating and all this kind of stuff. And I listened to her conversations about, you know, 
stuff going on in high school and it is all this oh well he's mine she's mine this is mine that's mine and no girl better look at him and he better not do this and blah 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 and it's it's just scarcity of if if your partner is around somebody else that you're going to lose them or it, the money comes comes in so you can't let it go past you because you may not get it back the you know it, holding on and not sharing openly about anything it really it, every single person has this showing up somewhere because we all have our insecurities so it's completely normal but it's the recognition of where you're going mine 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 and restricting because that restriction, if you have fear rise up in you and a feeling that you need to, a feeling that you need to just, uncomfortable spot the way I'm sitting. And if you have this feeling that you need to hold on to something because you may not lose it, recognize that underneath that current of I might lose is your ego working to try to control the situation because ultimately you're not feeling worthy of holding on to the situation of whatever that might be. So you're not worthy of holding on to the money. You're not worthy of getting more money and you're feeling not worthy of, of that. You're feeling not worthy of the job promotion. You're feeling not worthy of keeping the house that you just bought. You're feeling not worthy of, of um, the relationship that you're in. You're feeling not worthy of, you name it, okay? So you can just really go through and that will stem out in multiple forms of trying to hold on. So anytime we have this, this holding, it is a scarcity thought. A scarcity thought of, I can't let go of this because I may not ever get it again. I may lose it because it, it will just flow through me because I'm not worthy of holding it. And what you're doing in that is exactly what you don't really want to be doing. You're pushing it away. You are preventing it from staying. So, so often this happens and so often this happens and we don't even realize that it's, that it's going on. But what we're doing is we're pushing, we're pushing, we're pushing. So it's, um, oh, no, here we go. There is, I know this, I know this person and she got a job. And she was really, really excited about getting this job. And and she really wanted it. She needed the income. You know, she'd been unemployed for quite some time. So she really needed the income. And she finally, she gets this job. She'd been doing interviews. She gets a job. She's all excited about it. She goes in on her first day. But the entire time, she was telling me about how there's these other candidates, and she thinks that there's this other person that's probably better than her, and blah, 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 and all this different stuff. But she's really excited. And when she gets a job, she's like, woohoo, right? I'm so excited I got the job. Oh my gosh, I beat out all the other candidates. Well, all her energy was so, even though she was excited about the job, she had this negative energy coming through about, good morning, Michael. Um, no, oh, good morning, Addison. Good Morning, Maurice. Every time I do these on my phone, it's like once somebody makes a comment, it goes bloop, 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 and I see them rising up. I don't know. Oh, it's good morning, everybody. Um, so even though she was really excited about the job, she had a lot of negative scarcity energy about losing or not being able to keep the job because she felt that she wasn't the best candidate for it, which meant she didn't feel worthy of the position, okay? Well, end of the story is, is that she goes to her job the first day. She's all excited. She goes into her job. This happens, that happens. And I don't know exactly what happened because I wasn't there. But I do know that by mid-afternoon, she had lost the job. So it's like she was given the job. She tried to do this with her energy because she was like, oh. No, you know, like, oh my goodness, there's there's so many potentials for me to lose a job. So she was so fearful of losing the job that she actually pushed the job away very quickly, very, very quickly. Her belief that she did what did not deserve that job was higher than her desire to have the job. So that right there is what I want you to look at because 
you're probably doing this someplace in your life. I know that I consistently bat, come up against this and it is, it is that recognition of, of seeing it where it is and going, I'm going to let go right now. I'm going to let go. This is not, you know what? I didn't have it when it came to me and I may not be able to keep it long term, but I'm going to enjoy it, love it, really fully embrace it while it's here. And the best way to keep something is to let go. And if it is supposed to remain in your life, it will remain in your life. If you want to get rid of something really quick, do this. Grab a hold of it. Think that there's something better out there for the scenario. So if you're looking at a person, if you're in a relationship, then if you're thinking there's somebody better out there for them, then, and that you're not good enough for that relationship, then you're doing this, okay? If you just, if you're in that job scenario, like the person that I used as the example today, um, sorry if you watch this, by the way, if you're a good example, we love you. <laughs> but it is, um, it's, then, then you realize that, you know, if you've been looking for that, if you want that promotion, if you want that job advance, if you're looking for a job, then if you're out there and you constantly feel like you're not the best person for it, then you're, you may get it just because you're doing the numbers and you actually do, you are a good person for it. But if you feel like you're not the best person for it. It doesn't matter how great your resume is. You could be actually the best person for it and your energy is going to push you away. You could be the best person for that person that you just met, but your energy is going to push you away if you are not open with your connection to whatever it is, okay? So it's like opportunities will come to you when you're not attached to them. This is really, I mean, is amazing to me to watch how things just flow into my life when I will think it and it's like it just shows up it shows up in some way and I know hmm. and the instant I start to get like overly connected and attached to it and try to hold on it all of a sudden starts to go no 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 never mind never mind you're too attached to to this you're too much, it's too much, you're, you're scared that you're not, that you can't have this, that it's not real, that it's, that you're not really deserving of it, because I'm trying to hold on to it, I'm trying to put a leash on it so it can't go anymore, basically. Every single time I try to leash something, it runs away from me, it does, and every time I just go, oh wow, that's cool, thank you, thank you, oh wow, that's cool, thank you, and just more keeps coming in, more, 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 every single time. The more I, like in relationships, I always say, like I'm the, I'm the person who has a lot of relationships going all the time. And I'm not just talking about romantic relationships. Like I have a lot of people in my life, a lot of people that are always wanting to go to lunch and go out and do things and, and just connect in different ways. So it's like my, my reverse is that I, I love my alone time, right? So it's kind of like I hold on to the, oh, this is my alone time. And I hardly get alone time because I'm doing this. It's, it's like, I don't really deserve the alone time. I'm scared of not having the alone time. I'm scared of not being able to have that alone time. But that also on the flip side of that gives me tons of social and you know activity and connective activities whether it is with friends family or or a lover i i have constant asking of this because i'm not overly attached to it you have i have you know like all this abundant stuff comes in because there's not the attachment to it there is a desire for it there is a belief that it's there there is a belief that it's it, it it just is and remember that beliefs are just thoughts well practiced so pay attention to what are the thoughts that you're practicing a lot are you practicing oh this is never going to last this is never going to work i'm not good enough i'm not deserving enough i'm not this i'm not that because if you're practicing that then you've built a core belief that that is what it is if you've practiced the I'm never going to be alone, which is my 
well-practiced thought for me, I'm never going to be alone, then that right there is exactly what I have. I am hardly ever alone. I you know, I, like, I make wisecracks all the time about it and go look at single women and they go, how can you be single? There's men everywhere. Well, that's because that's what I fed myself so much that yeah, how can I... There, there's men everywhere. There's great men everywhere. Da, 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 da. And if you asked, I see Addison's online, but if you asked Addison, she'd be like, yeah, yeah I, I'm i that person that there's always, I will never be without a man in my life because of that thought. Well, whether you're looking at relationship or you're looking at money, you're looking at your job, you're looking at your health, you're looking at you want to travel, you're looking at get bigger better house, you're looking at a better car, whatever your core thinking is, has exactly what's created that belief. And that's what you're going to keep popping back to until you wake up to it enough and change it and start thinking something else, which means that you have to consciously go in there and start to actually think something else. So if you have the program on the flip side of like my program, which is my, my belief, which is I'm, I'll never be alone, right? So there's lots of people out there who believe, oh, I'm always going to be alone. Well, if you believe that you're always going to be alone, where's the room for a relationship? There's no room for a relationship because you think you're telling yourself, you're telling God, I'm always going to be alone. So what's going to show up in your life? being alone. Even if you get into a relationship, it's going to be a short-lived relationship because at your core, you believe that you'll always be alone. So pay attention to those core beliefs. You cannot, the universe is not going to change. You have to change. If you want something, the change happens inside you. That translates out and that draws back in what's going on in here. You want to make more money? then and step up your game and tell yourself that you want to make more money. And here's the thing. How people get absolutely irritated with me telling them to journal all the time. It's like, how can, what is the purpose of journaling? The purpose of journaling and the reason why you want to do this every day, maybe even twice a day, if you're really trying to break habits and stuff, is because you're going to, if you just run through the, the picture in your head, and you just do that, you can attach to it, but you're not going to attach to it in the same way as what you will when you're writing it out. If you're just in your head, excuse me, I just want to yawn. More coffee. If you just want to attach, if you're just attaching to it in your head, you're doing that, exactly. You're just being in your head. You can bring up some emotion to it, but it's going to be mostly a mental game. Okay, and the trick to changing that belief structure and focusing in on what you want so that you can draw it into your life, so that you can shift, shift your shit. I'll, I'll use a friend's term here. If you want to shift your shit, then, then what that is is that you have to make it the mental game, but also make it the emotional game. So you have to pull enough emotion into it to experience it. And when we're wanting something to happen in our life, like pulling in a relationship, pulling in a better job, getting that house, that car that we want, having the life experiences that we want. And maybe, maybe you, you're, you want to become a parent and you're, you're struggling with becoming a parent, you know, well, start to actually, uh, instead of blocking yourself from feeling this stuff, actually feel what it is like in that moment to experience that, or at least the best you possibly can. Okay. So, and that doesn't mean that you're necessarily experiencing the, oh, but experience the, the joy, experience the, the peace, experience the comfort experience the 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 just the happiness that you're going to have when you have this and if you start to bring that into you and think it that's great so now you've stepped up but you want to take it to a notch where you're actually changing that core belief good morning chris that core belief then what you have to do is actually journal it down. So when we write it down, we can attach even more emotion to it. And we're going to believe it quicker. So realize, and I'm not talking about typing here. 
I'm not talking about typing. You don't use, an, you don't access enough in your brain when you're just using your fingers to type. You have far more strokes that you can make that open up everything in your brain a lot easier when you actually handwrite things out. So you want to handwrite it out. You want to do this every single day. Work through it, work through it, work through it. Preach it to yourself every single day and not in the when I have. No, it's I have. It's the now, not the out there. It's the now. Make it here. Make it now. Your honesty is not going to get you anywhere on this. Do not be overly, do not live your truth means to live your truth right now as to how you want life to be, how you want to be perceived, how you want to be, what you want to experience in life. It's all about the right now. And that does not necessarily mean what is showing up. If you're looking at what is tangibly right in front of you, being you go, well, I'm being truthful. Well, guess what you're going to get more of? You should have said more of what I already have. That would be the correct answer there, okay? So that's exactly what you're going to get more of. If you're like, oh, well, I have, I only have $100 in my bank account. And that's just the reality. I just have $100 in my bank account. And then the next morning you wake up and you're like, all right, now I only got $95 in my bank account. Notice that if you start focusing on, well, this is all I have, then this is the truth. Well, it's going to just remain there. It's not like... The lottery is going to all of a sudden magically go, oh, hey, Joe Blow, here you go, you know, and here's a million dollars in your bank account. No, you want, you want that inflow of abundance no matter where it is. You need to start preaching it to yourself in your writing as though it already is, as though it already is, and feel into it and really, really feel into it. Imagine what it, it must be like and bring that into you and then write it out as though it is not this is what I want. If you're doing it with when I get, when I have, someday I'll have, that's that's keeping it out there. You're keeping it at a distance and you're telling yourself, I don't have. So what is God hearing? I don't have. So what are you getting? That you don't have it. So you're going to just keep not having it because you keep telling yourself that you don't have it. So you're painting this image, you're creating this stronger belief structure inside yourself from that I someday thought, well, someday never happens. The only thing you ever have is right now. So get clear with that right now. If you want to if you want to have an incredible relationship, then have a fucking incredible relationship right now. If you do this, you're going to squeeze the air out of it. If you do this about about your, you know, like that, the promotion, your your health, your whatever you're going for, that squishing and that mine, 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 mine. Okay, mine. It's my ball. I'm going to take it and go home. Right. Well. The kid that says it's my ball, I'm going to take it and go home, doesn't get to go have the fun and enjoyment of the connection of playing with the other kids. It gets to go home and sit with their ball and really has nothing. So they, they lose the whole experience because they don't want to let go of this, right? So they don't even get to experience it. And that is, you got to look for where you're being that kid that's going to take their ball and go home in, in different areas of your life. And really, really start to pay attention to that because that right there is one of the biggest keys that we across the board as human beings do that forces us to lose what we so, so desperately want. We want these things. We do. We want them, but we don't believe that we can have them. And therefore, we go restriction, 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 restriction. And it is scary as hell to go, no, I'm going to just open up. I'm just going to open up and I'm going to allow it to meet me. I'm going to allow it to remain in my life by staying open and not try to possess. I'm going to allow it by just loving it. I'm going to allow it by enjoying right here, right now. I'm going to allow it to remain in my life because I am open and have space for it. And I'm telling myself that I can have it. And that will bring more of it into my life. So whatever you're wanting, I think for the majority of people, it's probably either connection or some sort of 
money or experience that, that most people are going for. And if you wonder why it's not showing up, you're probably mining it someplace. You're probably holding on, grasping it, and smothering it. If, it, if you're not smothering it physically right now where you're seeing that the, the pull away yet from it, realize that the harder you try to grasp on, then it will just all of a sudden pull away. You want to know why the heck stuff is it just sometimes disappears. It's because we tend to hold on. We get into this scarcity mode, and that, that's normally the biggest culprit. The other reason why things pull away is because that they're just not in alignment to us. We're not in alignment to them. It's a short lived alignment and you know it might come in it serves its purpose it is what it is for that moment and then once one or the other um the vibration doesn't remain close enough to keep that match there so if one all of a sudden like if you if you take yourself this is perfect for relationships or for jobs but um you're in, let's just say you're in a relationship and everything's going okay. And then all of a sudden your partner, for whatever reason, goes, and we're breaking up or something like that. Okay. Let's just keep it pretty simple. Something, it, it either is that you did this with that relationship and, and smothered it in some way, energetically speaking, or one of you grew too far past the other. And if the other if the one that's not growing doesn't make some sort of change, then all of a sudden the break has to happen because you have to be within a certain realm. Realize that everything that comes into your life is coming into your life because it matches it matches your energy in some way right now. But that doesn't mean that's always going to match your energy. If you don't continue growing, if it's here and you don't continue growing, then it'll just go away. If if you grow past it, then it'll go away, okay? That doesn't mean to stop your growth. You need to be very, very cautious about that too. So trying to prevent your growth or somebody else's growth is not is not a loving act that's going to bring you much good in the long run, okay? So allow focus on keeping that vibration high, on doing your personal work, on growing, but realize that a lot of the times, like with a job or a relationship, the things will come in, they're gonna serve their purpose, their time, and if things don't grow consistently like this together, in, or like this, then at some point, it's going to actually break. That's why, you know, like all of a sudden you lose your job and blah, blah, blah. Well, things happen in the job, in the, in the workplace that you're not even really aware of. You know, that change of management, change of ownership, change of how, the, you know, their, their focus, all that kind of stuff. All of a sudden you have these breakups where, where lots of people end up losing, losing their jobs and stuff. Relationship that happens too. When you're dealing with money or calling in these things that you want into your life, Typically, we're aiming up here. We're aiming at something that is at a higher level than us that we're not used to experiencing. So if it makes you go like that, then then that's, that's not a bad place. That means like there's, there's energy there. But if you have fear pop up when you're moving towards it, that means that you're, it's moving too fast for you. You don't believe that it's it's really possible. So if you have this fear, which is comes back to this, right? When you get that, that's fear. Well, notice that if you have the fear around whatever it is, then then it's not quite in your scope. You're getting like a little taste of it, but chances are it's going to go away if you're holding on to that fear. So the best way to do this is to build yourself up so that you're not fearful. If you can just come at it with, yeah. Just that openness. There's no, there's no um, constriction inside yourself around money. If you're fearful of, of you know, well, what does it mean? It, what, well, if I, if I make an extra thirty thousand this year, then that means that I have to pay how much more in taxes? I mean, that's like that's a thought that goes through people's heads. Like, well, now I'm going to have to pay this much in taxes, or. Or, you know, oh, everybody's going to want to borrow money from me. Or everybody's going to think that I have this. Or, you know, my kids are going to blah, 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 blah. And whatever it is. There's there's so many different thoughts that go around this. All I really want you to pay attention to is where's your fear stemming up? Realize that you need to 
open up there because that is constricting. Notice where you're doing the mind scenario, that constriction. So it's going to show up in different ways of fear, jealousy, um, trying to almost exert that you are something that you really are not. So like personality changes and everything will go through different stuff like that where where we're almost trying to hold on by doing certain things differently. If you're not showing up as your as your true self in any given moment, then you're trying to shift yourself to fit a scenario. You're trying to make yourself fit that job. You're trying to make yourself fit that relationship. You're trying to make yourself fit the, you know, the picture of, of what you think abundance looks like in whatever way, then and it's going to be fleeting. It doesn't mean that you won't taste it. You might taste it, but it will be fleeting. You will be like, here it is, and now it's gone. You know, like, oh, and then you're going to be heartbroken because why? What did I do to to deserve this? Well, you didn't keep your your vibration wasn't authentic where it needed to be. So really focus in on ways that you can open up and allow instead of try to hold on and contain. Okay, it's the bird in the hand. You know, the bird in the hand open up if it's yours it's it will stay if it's you know let it go if it's yours it'll be there it'll come back if it's not yours it's gonna go and it's very very true it's a very accurate energetic um, picture to paint there so um, where are you doing this where are you where are you holding and restricting and doing that mind thing and pay attention to that and then look at your core beliefs around what you are telling yourself because those thoughts, okay, like I'm, I'm, ne I'm never alone. That's, I mean, like, there you go. That's a core belief of mine. I'm never alone. So I'm never alone. And, and then, you know, if, I, if you have the reverse, which I know a lot of people do, I'm never going to be able to find there's, there's no good men out there. There's no good women out there. I'm, I'm always going to be alone. I, I'm never going to really, you know, make a lot of money. I, I'm never going to be a homeowner. I'm never going to be out of debt. I, you know, I, oh, I'm 40. I, this one, I love this one. Since I'm over 40 now, since I'm over 40 now, well, I heard this when I was 32. It's absolutely crazy. It's crazy. So if this is you, realize that these are like core thoughts and they're not true. They're not true. So if you go, oh, I'm now this age. So this is what my physical body is going to do. I'm now 40. So now I have 40 year old hearing. I'm now 40. So now I have 40 year old weight gain. My metabolism doesn't work very good. I'm now 40. So now I have 40 year old stamina. I just, oh, I'm just exhausted all the time. That's all bullshit. Okay. I heard that at 30, I'm pretty sure I'll hear it when I turn 50. Oh, I'm this and that. All right. I can tell you what, it's all bullshit. It's all in here. What you're thinking, what you're feeling. That's a program. You want to you wanna have a vibrant life. You want to have all this stuff. Start telling yourself the right things. It does. You can get more work done internally. The physical body is going to just basically put out exactly what you're telling it. So be cautious of what you're telling it. If you believe that there's a certain timeline to when you lose your sight, when you lose your hearing to, you know, if you gain more weight, when your health starts to decline, then, then that's your timeline and that's what you're going to get. If you don't have a belief structure around that and you believe that you can live a long, vibrant life and not have all these ailments, well, then that's what you're going to get. Okay. So be very, very conscientious of, of those thoughts, whether it is relationship, health, money, what are your core beliefs? What are you preaching to yourself every single day? and write down what you want handwritten every single day so that you start to believe it and you can emotionalize it and shift those core beliefs. Do that every single day so you can start to shift it. But really, step number one, where's your mind, 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 okay? So, uh-oh. Okay, so my munchkins are yelling and kids are getting up. I love you guys. I will catch you tomorrow at 6 a.m. I hope that this was helpful in some way and as always if it was please hit the little share button 
Yeah, it helps me get everything out there. More people are watching Conscious Coffees. Facebook's working on all their stuff. That's all good too. Um, but you hitting the share button tells Facebook that it's something worthy of watching. So please, please, please do that. Continue making comments. Thank you for all your love this morning. And I hope that this was beneficial. I love you guys. And I'll catch you tomorrow around 6 a.m. ish.